Between 1968 and 1972, America launched nine human missions to the moon, six of which successfully touched down, allowing 12 men to walk on the lunar surface. NASA's next chapter of lunar exploration, called Artemis, has the task of not just going to the moon to create a long-term human presence on and around it, but also to prepare for ever more complex human missions to Mars. In short, everything we must be able to do here, we must first do here. So, what will an Artemis mission look like? Everything is designed and tested with our most important element in mind, the astronauts. This is their deep space, human-rated spacecraft called Orion, built in three parts. The crew module, where up to four astronauts will live and work throughout the flight. The service module, with life support systems for the crew and its own engine and fuel reserves. And a launch abort system, with engines capable of pulling the crew module to safety during launch should anything go wrong. To accomplish the task of launching our crew and heavy payloads, NASA is building the Space Launch System, comprising of a cargo hold, an exploration upper stage, a massive core stage, and two extended solid rocket boosters. Altogether, this is the world's most powerful rocket, and it exceeds the legendary Saturn V of the Apollo era in numerous ways. Sitting on the launch pad, the entire rocket, fully fueled, weighs just over 6 million pounds, 5.2 million of which is just the fuel. Once ignited, there is no stopping what comes next. All four RS-25 engines and the two solid rocket boosters come to life, thundering our crew upwards. Two minutes after ignition, the solid rocket boosters are spent and released. Eight minutes after launch, the core stage is depleted and separated. The upper stage fires briefly, placing Orion into a parking orbit around the Earth. Here, the crew reconfigure the spacecraft and check systems to confirm everything is ready for deep space travel. With a go from mission control, the crew reignite the exploration upper stage engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also put Orion on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the upper stage of the SLS is jettisoned and the crew aboard Orion coast for several days toward all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fundamental differences between Artemis and Apollo. Instead of requiring Orion to serve as an expendable lunar command module or to carry a constrained lunar lander, the Artemis missions will take advantage of a different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar missions will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rovers, science experiments, and human-rated systems on the surface. But it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communications relay. Designed with open standards, the Gateway can be expanded as new missions and partnerships develop, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time and enabling ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. The Gateway is also capable of adjusting its orbit to allow access to every part of the moon, something the Apollo missions could not do. But the real key in this approach is placing Gateway in a unique halo orbit to perfect the maneuvers needed for Mars missions. And with the growing list of commercial and international opportunities, Gateway is the ideal hub between Earth and all that lies beyond. Returning to our crew as they approach Gateway, the Orion must match the elliptical orbit of the station in order to successfully dock. Once on board, pre-selected crew members transfer to the lunar lander, while those assigned to Gateway remain on station. The lunar lander system itself is built for three unique steps. Descending from the halo orbit of Gateway down to a low lunar orbit, descending from low lunar orbit to the surface, and once the lunar mission is complete, launching from the surface of the moon and ascending all the way back to the orbiting Gateway. Once back aboard the Orion spacecraft and undocked from Gateway, the crew fire their engine once to break out of the halo orbit and once again to sling the spacecraft around the moon, placing it on a multi-day trajectory back towards Earth. As they near the end of this journey, the service module is released and the crew module is oriented heat shield first. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows Orion considerably, while also subjecting it to temperatures of 5,000 degrees. With the Orion now at just 300 miles per hour, a series of 
parachutes uniquely tested and produced for this moment deploy, decelerating the craft to just 20 miles per hour for splashdown. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon and prove that together we are ready to go beyond. Artemis stands ready. Ready to turn dreams into reality. Ready to return humanity to the moon and take us further than ever before. The culmination of inspiration and innovation, of Herculean efforts and steadfast collaboration, Artemis I is ready for departure. And the Artemis generation is about to leave its mark. What will be a journey of more than a half a million miles to the moon and back starts right here at Launch Complex 39 Bravo. Although this first flight will not carry a crew, it will test every system in the deep depths of space to prepare the way for future crewed missions. When the final go is given and the teams at Kennedy Space Center release this rocket, Artemis will roar to life and we will witness the beginning of a tightly choreographed mission. All The first two and a half minutes lift Artemis off Earth and build momentum. It's another six minutes of pressing uphill, accelerating to orbit. This is followed by a push from the second stage to raise Orion higher. And once all the systems are cleared to continue, the second stage will fire again and push Orion beyond the bounds of Earth. At this point, we're going to the moon. It'll take several days to reach our destination, but as we sprint across the void, many new procedures and systems will be tested and proven. 240,000 miles later, Orion will enter an oval-shaped orbit around the moon, one that will take Orion to about 60 miles above the lunar surface and then out to 40,000 miles beyond the moon. This is a distance farther than any human-rated spacecraft has ever gone before. As momentous as reaching the moon will be, returning to Earth is just as significant and challenging. Every observation we make, every lesson we learn on this journey prepares the way for humans to safely venture out and return home. And so on its final lap around the moon, Orion will ignite its main engine, push out of lunar orbit, and begin the long trek home. This is a spacecraft built for the harsh conditions of deep space, as well as intensity of returning home. Nearing Earth, Orion separates from the main power and propulsion systems of the European Service Module and prepares for the final sequence of events. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 24,500 miles per hour, the heat shield endures the fury of re-entry. The air around Orion reaches temperatures half as hot as the sun, but also slows Orion considerably. Until finally, parachutes can deploy, allowing Orion to gently dip into the Pacific Ocean. To the moon and safely home again. This is the journey of Artemis I, and it will set the precedent for all that follows. United with partners around the world, this is the challenge we choose. To meet hand in hand, step by step, lighting the way from the Earth to the Moon to Mars and beyond. We are ready.